Hey, what is up guys? This is Dr. Quads, and today I have a pretty exciting video. This right here, seven inch, is pretty much done. The last thing for me to do to test it was to figure out what's the best way to mount the flight controller. Now, this is a one piece frame design, so I'm gonna be getting very limited amount of interference, like a bolt not being tightened down or something wiggling or jiggling. There's very little external factors on the actual flight controller's noise profile. So that makes this the best possible way to test various different flight controller mounting solutions. So the first way I actually chose to mount the flight controller was by using this little suspension bridge thing that you clamp the flight controller down in this and then you kind of stretch it out just a bit and slot it into the struts that are on the bottom right here. And you have to kind of stretch it a little bit when it was all said and done, but that's how you would mount the flight controller. The second way I chose to mount the flight controller was by using these little gummies. Let me get these in place. These are some sort of silicone with a heat set inset M3 in there. And that way they're completely isolated from the frame. You see that this has complete movement separate from where you would screw this into. And the third way I mounted it was by just using the traditional gummies. These go on the flight controller and then four stack screws go up through the ESC and the flight controller and you tighten it off at the top with some nuts. So now we're gonna take a look at three black box logs that I captured and nothing changed about the quad except for how I mounted the flight controller. Now these test results are very interesting given the fact that they were so clear on which one was the obvious winner. This was Dr. Quaz's flight controller suspension method. So looking at the unfiltered gyro data, without any frame of reference, it can be kind of hard to understand whether this is good or bad. Looking at a lot of black box logs, this is not that great, but let's take a look at the frequency versus throttle. So right here, we have the throttle position zero to 100%. So when I'm not flying at all, it's at zero. And when I'm maxing the sticks out, it's at 100%. And we can kind of see where on the frequency, like where the frequencies are on this plot. This doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit noisier than I'm used to, but remember, these are big motors, this is a big drone, so there's gonna be a lot more vibrations coming through. But one interesting thing, and remember this is unfiltered, there's like no noise above 800, but the low frequency, it's really up there. That, that's, that's pretty intense. Now let's go ahead and take a look for reference at the gummies, these little tiny silicon gummy things that you can stick in between your flight controller and the ESC stack, and wow, that's pretty significant. Just a quick quick reference there. This is the Dr. Quad suspension method, which I probably shouldn't be putting my name next to it because it does not look good at all. That looks pretty bad. Clearly these gummies are superior, but let's take a look at the frequency versus throttle and really try to understand what's going on. All right, now there's a band out here that's going uh, pretty far up and this, this is to be expected. So like as you're pumping on the throttle, your motors are spinning faster the frequency gets higher. You know, just think about it. When you're like, you hear a noise like, hmm, that sounds like that, but then you're like, hmm, that sounds like you're going faster. You know, we hear that with cars. So the, the faster you're going, the faster the motors are spinning, the higher that frequency is gonna go. So this is quite normal, and that's actually really easy to filter out, especially you want a nice line, because that's gonna be easy to isolate that out with RPM filtering. So this looks pretty good. This little bottom one here, I don't actually really know what this is. This is definitely the motors right here, this, this, this one, and this one might be uh, a residual resonance or something like that, but not too bad. Can definitely filter that out. Let's take a look at after we apply our filters. That's pretty good. There's almost no noise. Let's go back over to this one, and you can see after my filters are applied, what does it look like? And you see that all this noise right here, especially at low throttle, very noisy. Now what that, and this is really something I've been hammering on people. You can tell a drone how good the tune is when it's flying smooth and slow. That's where you can really tell the drone. So I see some of these YouTubers who are like fellow designers and they wanna show off their drones and they're just zipping around doing freestyle. And that's not what I wanna see because anyone can make a freestyle quad that flies like sorta of okay, especially the faster you're going, the more you're turning and stuff. You can't really see if there's wobble in the pit, but when you're flying sm slow and smooth, basically at hover throttle, 
that's where you're gonna see the most amount of bounces and wobbles and things like that. And we can see that here, that even after we apply our filtering, we're still getting a pretty noisy signal and that's not acceptable. I would not ship that out. Let's go to the third method of mounting our flight controller, which is gonna be the normal method that everyone's been using for the longest time. And look at that. That's quite interesting. I mean, I'm kind of sad because I like the idea of innovating and finding a new awesome way to do something, but it really does just seem like the traditional method of mounting a flight controller is also the best. It's the easiest, it's the most accessible, and it's the best. So maybe that's why everyone does it and no one's been like me and spent you know countless hours trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, let's take a look now at the frequency versus throttle. And that is looking pretty good. Now this is broken up right here because I actually didn't do a very smooth punch out. It was raining at this time. So, you know, it wasn't raining bad, but like it was, it was started to rain. And so I needed to quickly get this test in before I went back. So that's why it's a little broken up because I probably went too fast and there wasn't enough data there of the actual throttle pump. So when you're doing these tests to look at your filters, you wanna hover around a bit, do a couple flips and then go ring. up to 100%, hold it for there for a second, and then you can drop it back down. That's gonna give you really great data. This is looking pretty good. And look at this line right here. It's gonna be really easy, and I'm guessing once we apply our filters, very good. Look at that, there's basically no noise. I'm still getting this little bit of low frequency noise right down here. I wonder what that is. If anyone knows in the comments, you can kind of let me know what's going on there. And uh, it, it's definitely not bad enough to where I have to fret about it, but you know, hey, let's all try to reach perfection, right? So I'm pretty happy with this because ultimately, I don't care if it's my idea or somebody else's idea. I want my drones to fly the best they possibly can. So it seems like it's gonna be the traditional method of mounting the flight controller for me and for pretty much all my drones going forward. This frame is doing exactly what I wanted it to do and giving me a really clean gyro and that motor noise, I can easily filter that out because it's nice and consistent. I'm really happy with this frame. It's gonna accomplish the cinematography I'm after and testing it with the full-size GoPro, I got an 18 minute flight time. That's pretty good given the fact that this is not like a specifically long range focused drone. Anyways guys, this is Dr. Quads. I hope this helps someone out there. Thank you so much for your time and attention, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, hello there. It's at this point that many of you might be asking yourselves, did I just join a cult? It's a perfectly valid question. Just make sure to like and subscribe. I repeat, like and subscribe. Also click up here or over there. Just click somewhere on the screen doesn't actually matter where you click, that's the secret.